If I had to pick one skill to learn for game dev, this would be it. I can tell you it's not story, it's not art, and it's not design. Why? Because none of those things matter if you can't make a game that's playable. So what am I talking about? Coding. Every game dev needs to learn to program, needs to learn to code. So why is that? Because without programming, without coding, a game is not a game. It doesn't matter how good your story is. It doesn't matter how good your art is. It doesn't matter how well designed your game is. If there is no code in there, it's not a game. You can make a fun game with bad art. You can make a great game with no story. You cannot make a game without code. Part of this thinking is from my own professional software engineering experience and because I've been doing a lot of reading and a lot of research on John Carmack and John Romero and how they became such great game devs. And it all boiled down to that they were great programmers at the core. Yes, John Romero was a great artist and great at level design and had multiple other skills, but in the end, what made them great developers was because of their programming skills, because of what they can do with programming. And the best part of this, the best part of learning code or why everyone should learn code, is you don't need to be an expert at it. You don't have to be on a Carmack level or a Romero level. You can learn the basics and that is enough to take you a really long way in your game dev journey. You don't need much. You need to learn how to make a character move, how to have triggers, how to have events, how to have win and lose conditions. If you're a solo dev, and most of us are, this is your ticket to make any game you want. If you can code, if you can program, you have all the power in the world to make whatever game you want. If you're an artist, you're limited. If you're a writer, you're limited. But if you can code, then you can make any game you want at any time you want. I'm not trying to say that art and story are not important in making games. They are important and they are great skills. But in the end, a game needs to have code. A game doesn't need to have art and a game doesn't need to have a story. You can get by with really good code in a game and really bad art or a really bad story or no story at all. You can't really get by with a game, or at least it's really hard if you have really bad programming or really bad code, but really good art or a really good story. Because in the end, if the game isn't functional, it's not really a good game and it's not going to do well. Now, for those of you that are artists or storytellers or writers or more on the artsy side and less on the technical side, that's okay. You can still learn the program and I encourage you to learn the program. Everyone can do it. It's not some magical skill or some genius skill. You don't need to be a genius. You don't need to be super smart. You don't have to be good at math. Everyone can learn to code. Yeah, for some people it's gonna be easier than others. Just like for some people art is e easier than others or some people storytelling or writing is easier than others. It's the same thing. But learning to code is easier to learn than learning art and it's easier to learn than learning to write. Anyone can learn it, it just takes a little time, discipline, and dedication. So everything I'm walking through is a system I teach in my game dev group. You can find the link in the description. Now if you are an artist, or you are a writer, or the storyteller for your game, I would still highly recommend learning to code, learning to program, even if you are on a team, even if you're not the one programming. Because if you're an artist or a writer, and you can understand what the code is in the game or read your programmer's code, you're gonna be a valuable asset to your team because you know as a game dev, we wear multiple hats. We are not only doing one singular thing. Even when you're on a team, you're typically having to do multiple tasks because we don't have large teams. We don't have big studios. We are either solo or we have a small team because we don't have the manpower or the budget where everyone can just do a singular task and not crisscross or or put on a different hat and say you're an artist or the writer for your game if you understand how the code works or understand the basic concepts of code or how your systems work you can better do your job you can better design assets for your game you can better design the story or write the story around your game you might run into as a writer or storyteller you have these grand ideas but then the programmer is like i don't know how to do that or i don't think that will work in our setting or as a game that might not be as visually 
pleasing or as accepting to the player. So if you have the skill, if you can learn to code, I would highly recommend doing it. And yes, there's always going to be exceptions to this. There's going to be graphic novels or story focused games or visual focused games, but those are the exceptions. Those are not the rule. And even those games require code. Like I said, it is not a game if it doesn't have code in it. Now, some of us aren't good at programming. Some of us aren't good artists and some of us aren't good at writing. So what do we do? What is the best thing to do? It would be to learn to code. You're going to be able to learn to code in a much shorter time than you can learn art or you can learn to write a story. You can learn in a year, if you dedicated a year to game dev programming, game dev coding, you would be proficient enough to make pretty much any game that you wanna make using one of the commercial engines out there. Yeah, there's gonna be some exceptions with like some online capabilities, but any basic game that a solo dev can practically make you're going to be able to do that or have the coding skill set within a year of dedication. You don't need complex systems. You don't need complex code. You don't need complex math. Everything's pretty simple. Now, if you spent a year learning art or a year learning how to write, I don't think you would be at the same level as you would coding. I think it takes years, if not decades, to become a proficient artist. It takes years, if not decades, to become a proficient writer. It does not take years or decades to become a proficient programmer. So I see a lot with indie devs out there, especially the ones looking to start or trying to figure out how to become an indie dev or a game developer. They seem to fall in the trap of, I can't code, or I can't learn to code, or I don't need to learn to code. I think part of that is a modern mindset because making games has become so easy because we have commercial engines, because we have visual scripting, because now, now we have AI, we have all this assistance. So it has kind of made us developers lazy. And I, I think it has scared a lot of people away because they try it and then they see, well, there's these other easy options. They try to learn to code. They try to learn the program and they see there's these, well, I can just visual script. I can use the blueprint system in Unreal. I can use Playmaker for Unity. I'm not sure if Godot has visual scripting. They probably do. I haven't used Godot. They probably do. But there's all kinds of options out there that make shortcuts to make it easier but it's not the same. Visual scripting is not the same as learning how to actually program a language or program using a language. There's a lot of reasons why in today, the modern times for game dev, people have kind of steered away from programming. I think it's because there's endless tutorials out there and we've all gone through the tutorials starting out, finishing them, maybe completing it, maybe half of completing it and realizing I didn't learn anything. I don't know how to code still. I just spent days, weeks, hour long sessions at a time, trying to make these games, trying to follow along the code, this complex code. And I don't remember how to do anything. As soon as I tried to learn it on my own or do it on my own, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't remember. I think that's very daunting. I think it's very demoralizing. I think it's very, I think it's just crushing for us developers as we're learning. Um, game dev is extremely complex and that's why it's kind of daunting and crushing when we go to try to learn to code and there's a thousand different things in front of us that we have to do in order to make something populate or generate or show up on the screen. So I still think no matter what, no matter how difficult it is, that coding is the best skill to have for a game dev. It is by far the best. So if you are pursuing this, if you are trying to become a great game dev, if you're trying to actually just get into game dev, Coding should be one of the first things that you address, one of the first things you should learn. And if you are trying it, and if you are struggling, just remember, it takes time. You're not gonna learn everything at once. It takes weeks, months, but in a year, if you stick with it, you will be far better off than when you were when you started. You will be able to actually code things from memory or actually read code online and understand what they're doing. And no, you're not gonna be an expert programmer after a year, but you'll be proficient. You'll be able to actually code things up on your own. You'll be able to throw together a game. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of dedication, and a little bit of discipline. If you're just starting out and you're trying to tackle how to create a game, how to add art assets, what story I should do, how to program, I would eliminate all of those and focus on just coding because you can still make a game, even if it's just sprites, basic sprites on the screen or basic pixel art or basic shapes, you can still make a game and make a fun game doing that. You can't make a game 
just focusing on art. And you can't make a game just focusing on story. But you can make a game focusing on coding, focusing on programming. If you're struggling, if you're feeling overwhelmed, learn one skill at a time. And I would start with programming. I would start with coding. And if you're unsure what path you should take for game dev, well, you should check out this video here where I go over my roadmap, the roadmap I use for myself, the roadmap I've used for my students to teach them, the roadmap that is allowing them to publish game after game after game. It takes you from day one of your journey all the way to day 365, one full year of game dev on what to do every week, every month along your journey. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.